Hi, my name is Ben Rathke, and I worked on Professor Sutterman's Robot Head project for my honors thesis, which started in the fall of 2017. I, along with a friend of mine, Gerardo Rivera, uh, were tasked with uh, redesigning some of the electrical characteristics of the robot, including making a PCB that could operate all the robot's servo motors, as well as have a 4x4 keypad, which could run some of the existing uh, PSOC C code functions uh, that were already written, uh, in addition to having a joystick um, when, in which a user could use to control some of the robot's movements. Uh, another one of our goals was to redesign some of the 3D printed parts uh, to make for a more smooth and hassle-free uh, building process. And uh, finally, one of our most important goals was to make these heads into uh, kits complete with an instruction manual. Uh, the idea was to hand these kits to uh, groups of high school students where they would assemble the robot themselves. And uh, with our first tests, they could uh, complete a robot in 80 minutes. And with our second tests, uh, students with no background in robotics could get a fully functioning robot assembled within 45 minutes, which is a huge improvement from what it would take us, as well as faculty members, you know, several hours just to complete one robot head. Um, so in this video, I will be going through the assembly process of one of our robot head kits. Um, if you decide to build a robot along with this video, I would recommend having a instruction manual in front of you as well as reference, since there's a lot of helpful images and labels in there as well. So with all that said, let's get started. So the first step is we're going to take the board, which is used to hold the robot. Um, this is just a normal particle board. It has four holes screwed in the corners for these little stands to keep the board elevated. Um, if you make your own board, make sure you have a square cutout big enough for a parallax servo motor, as well as the screw holes uh, to hold it. So first we're going to take one of the black parallax servo motors uh, in our kit. This one is labeled A. If you're doing your own kit, uh, make sure you put these labels on yourselves. Um, so we're just printing through the board. It doesn't matter which way. Uh, either way is fine. And then we're going to take the lower neck base, which is this part, this circular part here. Uh, you can see it has this extended ring on one side. We had to add that to increase the height a little bit, make sure it was the robot wasn't wobbling. Um, so we're going to set this down, ring side down. Make sure this circle part is centered with the uh, shaft of the servo motor. And then we're going to take four flat screws, which are, the screws are a little bit bigger, has the flat head on the top. Um, there's a few of these. These are, these are different than the small screws, which come with the servo motors. We'll be using those for other things, but these flat screws are what we need for this step. So to attach to this part, we're going to actually screw it from the bottom. Flip it over, and then from the bottom, screw those screws in to attach the lower neck base, the board, and the servo together. So as you see, I screwed it in, holds tight, and then uh, do this for all four holes. Okay, so I have all four screws holding this in place. I'm going to flip the board back over, and then we're going to take the upper neck base, which is this part, and if you print this out from scratch, you'll notice that the upper neck base is actually this part down, and that this is a separate part that goes in to, that attaches to it, that we glued on, because we didn't want the high school students that we tested with to put this on. As well, you can see one of the pieces for the neck U-joint at the top here uh, is also glued on, uh, which is something we did for preparation for this kit. And then finally, the horn that attaches to the servo motor is also glued on to the bottom of this part. Um, again, there was no way to really screw this on, so our solution uh, was to just glue it on for a quick fix. And overall, it just made the whole part just easier to use. Um, so if you're making your own kits, make sure that it's assembled like this. So what we're going to do is simply attach this to the servo 
doesn't matter what position since it rotates. Um, and then you're going to take the base screw. And there's only one of these in the kit, and it's the black screw. And these ones uh, come with the parallax servo, servo motors. And this is what we're going to use to attach this part to the board. And you don't want to screw it on too tight since uh, it might interfere with the rotation, but uh, as long as it stays on and rotates nice, that should be good. And then we're going to take the last two parallax servo motors uh, labeled B and C. And uh, in the kits, they already have the arms attached, as you can see. Um, however, there's really no way to uh, permanently attach, secure these properly. They can just pop off. Um, so, as you'll see with the other servo motors, they can't be popped off normally. Um, so this is something that could probably be fixed in the future. Um, so we basically glued these large servo arm pieces to the uh, servo mount of the servo um, as well. So you're going to take um, B and C, and this, so this part, this side is going to be the front of the robot. So B basically goes on this side, C is identical, uh, goes on the other side. So this will be the front of the robot head, and then B and C will be on the sides. So we're going to use eight of these small screws um, this time to secure these servo motors on the side. So we're going to do that. So now that we have both servos screwed on, um, as you'll see, if you're looking at the robot from the front, you'll see that B uh, will be on the left side and C will be on the uh, right side. Um, likewise, if you're looking from the robot's point of view, then C will be on the uh, left and then B will be on the right side. So the next step is we're going to take two of these threaded rods and four of these ball joint linkages. So basically, you're going to take two, screw a rod on one end, and on the other end, screw another ball joint linkage, and have it so that they, be, they both face different directions, like this. And then we're going to put on each end of the servo arms here. We're going to attach them. And we have these square nuts that you're going to use to secure the linkage to the servo arm. So like this. And then you can just lay it like this. And then we're going to do this for the other side. So now we have the thread rods. Uh, attached and secured to both of these servo arms. And then the next step is we're going to take the head base, which is this part, and as you can see there's the upper part of the neck U-joint already attached to this part. Uh, it's not glued on or anything, it's just in there. Um, although when you insert it, it's really hard to take out. So uh, for our purposes we stuck it in there. Um, and as you'll see that it's important that this part and, and this part are perpendicular to each other since if they're in the same orientation then they simply won't connect so that's something you gotta make sure of. And then we're also going to take the neck U-joint cube. This one is slightly larger than the cubes used for the eye sockets um, so that's all you know. And then we're also going to take two large pins which are these stainless steel pins. There's small, medium, and large pins. Um, so the large pins are simply the biggest of them. And before in the design, uh, these pins were 3D printed. And uh, we thought it was much more convenient and easier to use these st stainless steel pins instead of the 3D printed ones. Um, so we're going to take the cube, stick it in top of the upper neck base, and stick a pin through it to hold it. And then we have these pin clips, that we call them. They look like little hitch pins. And you're going to stick these in the hole at the end of the pins themselves to secure it so 
pin can't come out. So the cube's on there. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick the head base on the cube. Take a pin. Place it through. Take a pin clip. Attach it on the other side to keep it in place. There. And remember that this is the front of the robot. So make sure the head base is orientated in this direction. And then we're going to take the threaded rods and take the ball joint linkages and stick them through the holes on the head base like this. And then on the other end, take a square nut again and secure that. So now we have the head base uh, properly secured to the upper neck base. And now we're going to set this aside. And we're going to take the upper jaw piece, as well as servo motors D, E, and F. And as you can see, servo motor F has the lower jaw attached to it. Um, basically, we glued a servo horn to the lower jaw and then uh, screwed on the piece so that the servo doesn't come off. So if you're making your own kit, make sure you um, do this. As well as for all the blue servo motors, we have the um, servo horns screwed on so that they cannot be removed. Since we didn't want high schoolers to remove the servo horns, since each one is individually tuned in the C code. So um, each servo is individually tuned, so if you pop off the horn and put it back on at a different angle, then that would mess with its uh, range of motion. So we wanted to make sure that the horns could not be removed by any of the servos. So we're going to take servo motors D and E, and we're going to screw them on on this side of the upper jaw, and then we're going to take E, which goes on the opposite side, and then make sure the wire sides of the two servos um, face up. And then we're going to use four uh, small screws to secure these servos. So I have screwed on servo motors D and E um, to the upper jaw. And then we're going to take servo motor F. And it's going to go right below servo motor E, like that. And make sure that the um, label side that says F is facing outward. Um, same thing for basically uh, D and E as well. So now that we have all these attached, you can see that the lower jaw can rotate freely. Uh, make sure the other end of the jaw uh, is inserted into the small hole on the upper jaw part, just so that it attaches there. So since that's assembled, now we're going to take the lips. As you can see, it's two uh, these red tubings um, screwed together. And as you'll see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws in this. And we wanted to leave them in the tubing for the kits since uh, we didn't want the high schoolers to, you know, actually screw on the screws in odd positions on the tube and get the alignment wrong. So um, the tube that's cut in half is the bottom part of the lip. The two screws on the ends here screw on to the horns of D and E right here on the side. And then the other four screws on the front of the lips screw on to the small holes, as you can see, on the upper and lower jaw, respectively. So I finished screwing the lips on the ends of the servo motors, and then I'm going to finish up screwing these in the front. Make sure all four doesn't have to be too tight as long as they stay on the parts. So that's how the lips go on. You see that the jaw should still rotate uh, pretty well with the lips on. And then once you finish with uh, this piece, this is going to go simply on the head base. 
So the two pegs on the bottom of the upper jaw connects to the two holes in front. And those just slide in there. Now we're going to move on to assembling a different part of the Volac. So we're going to take the eye mechanism, which is this big piece. And um, as you see, we these two parts in the front are the parts for the eyeball view joint. And um, before, they just snapped on and attached. And um, again, we glued these two parts to the eye mechanism since uh, the, the physical connection wasn't really that secure, and we didn't want these coming off. And since there's no really good way to screw them on at the moment, uh, we glued these two parts to the eye mechanism. Then we're going to take a blink mechanism bearing. It looks like this part. And there's a ball bearing that fits inside of this part. Um, so you're going to want to do that. Um, we didn't want the high schoolers to put this in as well. So make sure you just don't forget to put the ball bearing in this part. And then we're going to take servo motors um, G through L. And as you'll see, again, um, we wanted to have the horns screwed on to the servos and we didn't want them to be removed. And these 3D printed parts um, with the ball joints on them, uh, we call them eye control pieces. And basically these are super glued as well to the actual uh, factory servo horns. And then once those are glued on, they are simply screwed on to the servos. So we did these for all the, um, basically all the servo motors. Um, so for the kits, um, this is not part of the instructions since uh, this is all done beforehand. So if you're making your own kit, make sure you have all these servo horns uh, glued on and screwed on to uh, each of the servos. So we're going to start with servo motor G. And since this side is going to be the front of the robot, Basically, G is going to be upside down, and it's going to be on the left side if you're looking uh, straight at the robot. So this will be the left side, and G is going to be upside down. And you can see that there's small little slits in each of these spots for the servos, and that's the side where the wire goes. Um, so make sure that's orientated correctly. So G is going to be upside down, and then... Uh, from left to right, it's going to be H next to it, and that's going to be um, right side up. So we're going to put that in there. And then again, the slits for the um, wire shows you which or, uh, direction to face. So that fits in there. Uh, so that's up uh, right side up. So G, H, and then I, and then J. And then... It's basically the uh, same thing as this side, where um, I will be upside down as well as G. And then finally, J is right side up again, and then on the right. And then finally, K is in the back right here. And that's also faces up, not upside down. So these five servo motors directly go into the I mechanism. So again, you have uh, G, H, I, J, K. And uh, again, um, G and I are upside down. And then we're going to basically use two screws, two small screws, to secure each of these servos to the eye mechanism itself. And then once you do that, take servo motor L. And as you'll see, servo motor L has this uh, 3D printed piece on it called the tilt horn. And uh, basically, um, this part was redesigned several times. Uh, it's also super glued to the servo horn. And we wanted it to be screwed on so it can't be removed. Um, so this is responsible for the lid pitch, uh, which isn't actually used in the code. Um, 
but it's there. So we're going to take a uh, this servo and the link mechanism bearing, and we're going to attach that like so. Uh, make sure the L faces outward and uh, basically orientates like this. And then we're going to also use two screws to attach the servo to this part. So I've screwed on all the servo motors to the I mechanism, two screws each, and as well as secured the servo motor. And we're going to take the metal rod, which is this, and we're going to insert it to these two clamps on the I mechanism. And the blink mechanism bearing is going to go through the rod. So make sure the ball joints face the front of the robot, which is this side. I'm going to insert that in there, push the rod through the bearing, the ball bearing, and through the other side of the clamp. So as you can see, it's attached there and it can slide uh, back and forth. Now, we're going to take one of the pieces for the eyeball U-joint, look like these, we're going to take two of those, two of the eyeball U-joint cubes, which are the smaller cubes, and we're going to take two medium pins, uh, again, the stainless steel pins, and two pin clips as well. So basically, simply we're just going to stick the cube through this part, put the medium pin, through and then use the pin clip to attach the part. So you can see we have the cube um, attached and it's not going to come out. And then we're going to do this for uh, the other side as well. So this is going to be for each eyeball. Then we're going to take the eyeballs, which are these parts. And uh, basically, the end of the U-joint um, has a little screw hole, and this is going to be inserted into the eyeball. And then, um, as you can see, um, the screw is going to come in through, through the front of the eyeball, and that's how it's going to secure these two parts. So we're going to take one small screw, basically hold it in, in here like this, and then place the screw the pupil and then screw it in to attach the parts. So I've screwed the part uh, to the inside of the eyeball and you're going to want to loosen the screw a little bit and orientate uh, this part properly. Um, so it's kind of hard to see but the this is going to be what it looks like uh, from top view. So the ball joint on top and on the left is what you want to orientate the part to, and then you basically want it so the cube, uh, the, um, the pin, goes uh, side by side like this. So it's basically parallel with the left ball joint. Um, so that's how you want to orientate the part because then we're going to take the eye mechanism, and basically we're going to take the eyeball. Again, the um, ball joint should face top. And we're going to basically secure the cube into this piece, like this. Then we're going to take another, another medium pin, stick it through the top to secure the cube to the U-joint. And then again, take a pin clip and attach that to the bottom of the pin, like that. So if you're looking at the robot's point of view, the ball joint for the eyeball should be top and left. And this is identical for the other side as well. So you're going to insert it like this, make sure that the um, both joints top and left. So I'll do that right now. Take a pin, connect the parts, take a 
pin clip on the other side again to secure the eye sockets. So again, so this will be the front of the robot. This is from the robot's point of view. Both eyeballs should be facing up as well as to the left. So now we're going to take the eyebrow holder, which is this part here, and the part where it's flat with these pieces that extrude out, that's going to be the front. And we're going to take servo motors M, N, O, and P. And basically, they go on simply like this with the uh, letter label facing outwards so it's readable. And basically, it's going to go from left to right alphabetically, M, N, O, P, like this. O and then P. So you can see that it goes like that. And then we're also going to use two screws to attach each of these servos to the part. So now I've screwed all four servos to the eyebrow holder. And now we're going to take the eyebrows, which are these two black tubes. And uh, we already have two screws inserted into the tube. Um, and we did, we did this beforehand since we didn't want um, students inserting the screws at the weird positions on the tube. So we just wanted it easily aligned um, with the part. So basically, uh, for, for each side, we're going to take two servos and uh, screw one end of the eyebrow to the horn of one servo. Do the same thing on the other side. So that's one eyebrow. And as you can see, uh, both ends can rotate. Make sure when you attach the eyebrow, the servos are kind of extended outward like that, not inward. Um, so as you can see, I've attached the eyebrows now to the eyebrow holder. And we're going to set this aside. And we're going to return to the eye mechanism. And we're going to attach the blink mechanism pieces. So there's three. This is blink mechanism A. And there's only one of these. And basically what you're going to do is it's going to attach to servo motor in the back. And it's going to attach to the blink mechanism bearing, the part that slides back and forth. So, the top part goes into the servo, and then the, the one that orients to the side goes on that ball joint on the blink mechanism bearing. So as you can see, if I rotate the servo in the back, it pushes the bearing back and forth. And this is going to be used for the blink. So then we're going to take blink mechanism B, which is this one that's kind of curved. And there's two of these. Um, color doesn't matter. Uh, just depends on what color the materials are printed at. There's really no difference. Um, so this one's going to attach to the servos on the bottom. So one end goes here on the bottom, like this. And then the other end is going to go on the left ball joint on the inside of the eyeball. So let me do that real quick. So I'm going to attach the bottom servo. And then it's going to go into the inside of the eyeball, the left. Just snap that in there. So as you can see, it's attached like that. So as you can see, when I rotate the servo on the bottom, it's going to move the eyeball left and right, control the yaw direction. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other eyeball as well. Before that, I want to show you blink mechanism C, which is the one with the this right angle in there. And this one's going to attach to the top servo here, and then the um, top ball joint on the inside of the eyeball. 
So I'm going to do that. And then it's going to attach to the inside. Just snap it on like that. So as you can see, when I rotate this servo, it's going to control the eyeball pitch up and down. So basically the eyeball has both of those uh, blink mechanisms uh, attached to it. And then make sure to do the same exact thing for those two parts on this eyeball as well. So now that I, ha I have all the blink mechanisms on the two eyeballs. And now we're going to attach to the eyelids. So we're going to take two of these. These are blink movement pieces. The ones that look like this. And they're going to go on the ends of the tilt horn, which is the one attached to the uh, blink mechanism bearing in the center. So those are going to go like that on the top and bottom side. Just snap on. So they're going to basically, the ends are going to lay in the front here. Then we're going to take four eyelids and you want to make sure that you have each pair correctly so as you can see when you take two they should line up where they fit together like this so the top and bottom eyelids are set different pieces so make sure that you can put them together like this so once you do that you're going to take uh, one set of eyelids put it over the I, one of the eyeballs and make sure that these extruded holes on the side as you can see all face inwards because we're going to take the pegs of these um, blink movement pieces that we just put on and those are going to go into these little extruded holes then we're also going to take the small pins which are the smallest of the metal pins and these are going to attach the eyelids to the sides of the eye mechanism. So the easiest way to do this would be to take one set of eyelids, put it over one of the eyeballs, take the small pin, insert it to the side right here to attach it to the eye mechanism. Make sure it goes through both eyelids so now that holds like that. Do the same thing on the other side as well. So I'm going to take two eyelids, put it over the eyeball, use a small pin, attach it to the eye mechanism, make sure it goes through both. So now we have both eyelids kind of secured like that. Then we're going to take the blink movement pieces that we just put on, and these pegs are going to go into the extruded holes of the eyelids themselves. So make sure you just stick it in there like this on both sides. So now with this setup you can notice that the um, blink mechanism bearing um, pushes the two blink movement pieces which connect to the eyelids forward. So basically the blink is now all controlled by this one back servo motor. So when I move it forward and back, you can see it controls the blink. So basically when it pushes, uh, when the servo moves forward, pushes the blink mechanism bearing uh, along the rod, which pushes the blink movement pieces forward and back, which is what pulls the eyelids open and shut. So in the instructions, it would usually have you put on the eyebrow holder uh, before attaching the blink mechanism pieces as well as all the eyelid parts. But for the sake of this video, um, I thought it would be easier to handle the whole assembly um, without this part on yet. So if you do decide to put on the eyebrow holder after this assembly, 
all you have to do is make sure you disconnect um, uh, this blink mechanism piece on top so that there's room for the part to go. So disconnect that, and then this simply slides into the eye mechanism itself, like that. So now we're going to start putting the whole robot uh, together now. So now we're going to take the head support bridge, which is this big piece, and this simply um, inserts to the two back holes on the head base and uh, make sure it's aligned like this. And then we're going to take the eye mechanism, the whole thing, and it's going to lay on top and then be, be screwed in. So when it all comes together, these back um, holes here and here are what is going to align with the head support bridge um, to be screwed on. So there's going to be four screws here and then four here as well. That's going to attach to the head support bridge. And we're going to use the flat screws, uh, the ones that we used in the beginning, uh, the larger ones, um, to do so. So uh, from the back, you can see I have the screws here and then here as well. And I'll finish attaching that. Now, now that we have the eight screws um, attaching the whole thing, the physical build of the robot is complete. All right, so now that the robot head is built, the last thing is to connect it to our PCB. And um, so what we did is we pre attached all of these uh, jumper wires to the board already since we didn't want the high schoolers to be physically attaching things to the board itself. Um, so we have all the wires pre-attached there and each end of the wires is labeled alphabetically with the uh, corresponding servo it goes to. So basically for each of the servos on the robot, you're going to want to attach it to these wires. And if you're making your own kit, um, you're going to want to label these wires yourselves again. Make sure they match the specific port on our um, PCB. So on the PCB itself, we have very we have engraved um, small letters indicating the specific uh, part. So for example, one of them says LP which is for lid pitch, or LL, which is um, left lip, or jaw, which is the jaw. So these are labeled on the PCB itself. So you're going to want to alphabetically label them um, however you want if you're making a kit from scratch. Um, so for example, we'll take, this is server motor K, then we're going to take wire K, and then just make sure uh, ground is connected, power is connected, signal is connected correctly. So brown should align with black and orange should align with white on the wires. Alright, so now I have all these servo motors connected to the PCB. And the last thing is to take one of the power supplies. Uh, in this case, the this one is 5 volts. 8 amp output. Um, you're going to want to plug one end into an outlet and then one end into the DC jack right here on our board. It's not powered yet. And then um, the switch, when the switch is pointing towards the screen, uh, that means uh, all the servo motors uh, do not have power, and but the PSOC could still be programmed. We call this state programming mode. And then when you flip the switch, all the servo motors will have power. Um, so this is basically a disconnect for the servo motors when you want to program, since when you're programming, sometimes the servos can twitch or jitter. So we don't want that. Also, when you're programming the PSOC, um, you might get an error uh, if you have all these servos plugged in. So to work around that, these two um, servos on the end 
the LL and REP for left lip and right eye pitch. So basically these two on the end should be disconnected since these two servos basically connect to two test pins on the microcontroller. And when you're programming, um, while these are connected, you'll get an error. So whenever you program, just make sure you disconnect uh, these two on the end, these two servos, and you, can, you should be able to program with no problems uh, with USB. So make sure your switch uh, turns off all the servos when you program, and then uh, when you're finished programming, you can plug these back in. Put the switch on, it'll run everything. Um, so let's go ahead and actually power on the robot. All right, you'll see that we have everything set up now. We have all our servo loaders plugged into the PCB. We also have our joystick plug-in and our 4x4 keypad. So once you apply power to the board, you'll notice that there's a orange light, so you should see that. So uh, now I'll go through all of the uh, keypad functions as well as the joystick code. So let's switch it on. So whenever you power the robot on, it goes to a neutral state that we programmed. Um, so in this neutral state, uh, you can press any of the keypads. Uh, so we'll press one, that's blink. And whenever you press a button on the keypad, uh, it will show up what you pressed on the LCD screen. When nothing's being pressed, it will prompt you, press a key. So now we'll do number two, which is pitch eyes up and down. Three, the open mouth, and then close. Do four, which is pan eyes, which is left and right. Five is nod head. Six is turn head right. And then it'll turn back to center. Seven will be eyebrows up. Eight, smile. So that's both of the end servos as well as the mouth open for smile. Nine, the tilt head left and right. Do that one more time. And then zero. We browse down. Then we also programmed four reactions um, on, K, on keys A, B, C, and D. So this is key A. So that was a surprised reaction. Then key B. So that was a happy reaction. Uh, key C. So that was a confused uh, reaction. And then, oh, you'll see that something popped off. We'll put that back. All right, and then lastly, so that was our tired reaction. So that's all the uh, functions uh, for the keypad. Uh, lastly um, is joystick mode. Um, so to do that, you press star, and then it will say on the screen, joystick mode, press a number. So now you can either press 1, 2, or 3. Uh, if you press 1, it will give you control of the head. So now I have the joystick. I can tilt left and right, which will swivel the head. If I go up and down on the joystick, it will turn the head. And finally, I can press down on the keypad, 
or sorry, press down on the joystick um, to open and close the mount, since there is a push button on the joystick. So what's cool is that if you have the head in a certain position, like say I hold it here, then I switch to a different mode, say uh, I press 2, 2 it will let me control the eyes. But notice that the head stayed in the original position when I was controlling the head. Uh, so you, this acts as a basically customizable feature for the head itself. So left and right will be uh, pan eyes, up and down will be uh, yaw eyes. Oops. Let's pop back on. And then pressing the joystick will blink. So I can hold the eyes, say like this direction, and then I can go to three. Three will control the eyebrows. So left and right will control one eyebrow, and then up and down will control the other eyebrow. So I can hold the eyebrows like this, and then go back to pressing one. And you'll notice that the eyes and the eyebrows are still in the spot that I held them at before. So if you want to get out of joystick mode, simply press A. It will say exiting joystick mode. And then you can go back to pressing the keys uh, as before. Again, if you power cycle, it will always go back to a neutral position. So finally, uh, you'll notice that sometimes when you're building the robot, uh, the black parallax servo motors will sometimes jiggle up and down as if trying to get to a certain position and, and constantly overshooting it. Um, this happens when you use the servo motor a lot and it's been through a lot of use. So uh, simply the gears inside are uh, becoming loose and slipping. So if this is the case and it's happening, happening frequently, I would su suggest that you replace the servo motors. Uh, this can also happen with the uh, blue servos as well. Sometimes when you program them to a certain position, uh, the horns will constantly slowly move as uh, even though they're su supposed to stay in place. This is also due to the gears slipping inside and it's simply uh, due to excessive use. So if this ever happens, uh, simply just swap out the servo motors for new ones and uh, you should experience uh, no more problems. So that's all the uh, functions and the joystick mode for the robot head, as well as the entire uh, building process. Um, so that concludes this video. Thanks again uh, for watching.